Measuring muscle mass, body fat, resting metabolic rate, I think are so important to do at least once a year. I'll walk you through what kind of data you get, pros and cons of this method versus the other six methods that I've tried and how to get this kind of scan for the cheapest amount possible. We'll go through all of that. You might wonder, hey, why not just use a weight scale? Why go through all this trouble? Well, you know, weight is not gonna tell you if that weight amount is muscle or, or fat. So this does, and it's kind of great in that way. So let's hop in and figure out what this is even telling us. This is actually one of my tests. And as you'll know, you can tell here, it says measure date. That just tells you all of the times that I've gotten the scan. The next thing you'll see here is total body fat percentage. This is basically their way of calculating what your total body fat percentage is. One thing to note about this type of scan, which is called a DEXA scan, is that it does typically overshoot the amount of body fat that you have. For example, what I'm seeing here is that I have around 36% body fat the last time I took the test, which was on April 1st. And realistically, that's probably gonna be closer to like 30, 28%. But the good thing about this test is that it's super consistent with itself. So, you know, I don't really care too much about what the numbers say. I care more about what is my progression over time. Basically, don't get too worried if your numbers are reading kind of high here. So one good way to test this is to actually go to your web browser and look up body fat photos uh, for either a woman or a man. And you can basically kind of get a sense of 15% look on a man versus a woman. And I found that to be super helpful to kind of get a, a gauge of where you are. So kind of the takeaway here is that this particular DEXA scan measurement tool is very, very consistent with itself, but it does overshoot the amount of body fat it reports in people. I don't mind that. I don't mind if my numbers read high. I just want consistent reports so that I know, you know, between now versus next year, have I gained body fat? Have I gained muscle mass? Here you'll see total mass. That just means how much stuff you have that com combines fat, bone, muscle. And then here you see the breakdown of fat and lean tissue. And then here you see something called bone mineral content, which is basically just a measure of how strong your bones are. So taking a look at this body fat percentile chart, what the companies basically do. So this particular company is called Body Spec. You can get ones at DexaFit. There's a ton of companies, ton of hospitals that actually use this technology. So go to any of them basically. But this particular company is basically taking every single person who took a scan with them and creating sort of that population and then measuring the person, you know, in this case me, against that population. So just one thing to note there is that you know, the people who are getting these scans are gonna be kind of fitness minded. They're gonna be, you know, they're gonna care about being healthy. So this is actually gonna be a sort of population that is gonna be more fit than average. So you're gonna score a little bit lower on this chart than quote unquote average. But that's probably the comparison group that you wanna kind of be holding yourself against. So this is the part where things could get a little confusing, but you'll notice here that you have this picture of a person and the white is obviously bone. The green is the muscle that sits around the bone and the red is basically the fat. And this kind of makes sense in the photo. You can see the fat is outlining the hips and the arms, you know, makes sense. So here, you can see what's called this regional assessment. And a regional assessment is basically gonna take the parts of your body and break down the amount of fat that you have and the amount of muscle that you have. So let's take a look and see what this is. So arms are pretty straightforward. That's just the total mass in your right and left arm. So in my case here, I have about 35% is of my arms are fat. You know, of the 15 of total mass, 5.5% is fat tissue. The other 9.2 is muscle mass. Whenever they say lean tissue, that just means muscle mass. And this basically, again, measures the strength of the bones in those areas. But that's pretty straightforward. Legs are also pretty straightforward. That's basically gonna be the mass in your right and left leg. One thing to note is that it does not include your glutes. So it does not include this little V shape here that you see. That is not included. It's really just your, you know, left leg right here, right leg right there. You know, the rest of this is read the exact same way. So again, for me, it's about 35.7% total mass, total pounds of legs for me is 47 pounds. And that breaks down into 17 pounds of fat tissue. That, that sounds like a lot as I'm saying it. Uh, and 28 pounds of muscle. Cool. All right. So the last three are ones that get tricky and it's natural to confuse these. So, you know, yeah, the first one is basically your trunk. So the trunk basically is everything except for your arms and legs. So this will include your neck, your chest, your abdomen, and your pelvic area. And obviously it includes your head and it does include a part of your gluteus maximus. So that's something to know. The next part is the android region. So this is basically the lower abdomen. Uh, it's what most people would consider the stomach area. So this is gonna be, again, the area 
area between the ribs and the pelvis. And one thing to note is that the trunk is gonna completely enclose the android area. And that kind of makes sense and will include this triangle area right here. So that's that. And then we also have the gynoid region. That's the last region right there. Gynoid is basically just gonna be your glutes, your hips, your upper thighs. So this will include the V shape right there and it'll also overlap with your legs and your trunk. It won't include all of the legs, but there's just gonna be some overlap between that and the trunk. So that's kind of good to know. It's kind of an odd classification. Personally, I would definitely do it differently so that there's like less overlap in certain areas, but it does tell you a lot about your health and where your muscle is growing, what areas to target in terms of growing muscle mass. So it's super helpful in that way. Moving on to the next page of the breakdown, you basically get this thing called your resting metabolic rate. So effectively, we all are burning calories when we sleep just to exist, right? Just to keep everything working. That's basically your resting metabolic rate. So imagine if you spent the whole day just sleeping and like not moving, just catatonic on your bed. That number, the resting metabolic rate number is gonna be how, uh, how much energy it takes to basically power you being on your bed the whole day. So for me, you can, you can kind of tell that this varies a tiny bit, not too much actually, with my muscle mass and my fat mass. One thing to note with this is that this is just how much energy it takes to power you when you're asleep. But most of the day we're out and about, we're walking, we're doing things, we're talking. So what you typically wanna do is add 20% to your listed resting metabolic rate. And that'll give you basically your maintenance rate, not including exercise. So if you are just pounding it at the gym, um, you know, obviously take that into account when you're trying to figure out how much to eat. Why this number is really helpful is if you follow and believe the calories in calories out philosophy, which is a whole other topic because I don't necessarily agree with it fully, but if that is sort of your mechanism of losing weight or gaining muscle, the best thing to do here is to basically refer to your RMR to uh, figure out how much to eat to either maintain your weight or lose weight or gain weight. In this area right here, you basically see a kind of a repeat breakdown of your android and gynoid body fat percentage amounts. The reason they have that here is because it is very important that people's android percentage is less than the gynoid percentage. So this is basically called the AG ratio. And as you can tell here, it's basically on the border, right? It's right at one. So it should be basically 0.9 or 0.8 or something like that. I happen to carry all of my weight in my stomach. It's terrible. Uh, it's, you know, there's actually a ton of cardiovascular metabolic markers that come with carrying weight in your stomach. So this is actually a really great reminder to me that I need to work on that. So this is important to look at your ratio and just make sure that you have less fat in your stomach than you do in your hips, thighs, and butts. Did I say butts? I mean, butt, <laughs> singular butt. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, next up we have visceral tissue. So this is basically a measure of fat under the muscle. The other type of fat is basically subcutaneous fat, which is just fat above the muscle. So visceral fat is actually super important to keep in mind because it is actually much more dangerous than subcutaneous fat. Uh, and so this basically gives you a breakdown of that in your body. So as you can tell on the screen, visceral tissue. So visceral fat is something that's associated with a number of metabolic diseases. So from obesity, diabetes, insulin resistance. So this number is really important. So typically you wanna keep this VAT number below one and I ideally as low as possible. And then there's the bone report, which basically just tells you how strong your bones are. A lot of this is sort of genetic. You can also strengthen it by doing strength training. Basically what you do is you look at your total percentage here. I see it's 1.7 and you can basically check out this comparison to the population. So a score of 1.7 means that your bone density or bone strength is basically greater than 93 to 97% of the population. So you have pretty strong bones. So that's that, kind of cool to know, especially if you're kind of older. Older women, for example, are susceptible to osteoporosis. So they would obviously have lower numbers in, in this kind of measurement. Finally, at the bottom here, you have muscle balance report. So this basically tells you how much muscle and how much fat do you have in your right or left arm. So I, for example, when I was younger, I used to work in an ice cream shop and my right arm was just ripped beyond belief because I would be scooping these like heavy, hard ice creams out. Uh, and then my left arm was just 
week, you know? <laughs> so, you know, this is something that's important if you do a one-sided, you know, fitness activity. So pole vaulting or golf, you know, anything that is like, you know, significantly strengthens one side of your body. You just want to be careful to make sure you don't have too much of an imbalance because that's going to cause a bunch of injuries in the future. So typically they say that if the imbalance is less than two pounds, you're fine. And then if it's greater than two pounds, that's where you probably want to look into strengthening that one side to, to match the other side. So here you can tell if we look at, let's say, right arm and left arm. So in terms of the total muscle between them, they're actually pretty similar. They're exactly the same. So there's really nothing to worry about there. Right leg versus left leg. It looks like my left leg has one pound of more muscle than my right leg. Good to know. So again, one pound, not really anything to worry about two pounds is kind of where you start to consider strengthening the other side. More data. Okay, so this is actually really cool. So what this shows you is every time that you've taken the test, it'll show you what the change has been. And this will go back to the first test that you've taken. For example, for me, you can see I've taken four tests and it shows the kind of overall trend lines. So you can see the measured changes in terms of numbers. So from the last time that I took the test right here, change versus previous, I've lost two pounds of fat in my arms. And the change from the baseline just refers to the first time that you took the test right here. Uh, for me, it was June 5th, 2019. It looks like I had 4.7 pounds of fat versus now I have 5.5 pounds of fat, so I've gained 0.8 pounds. So it just basically does this analysis for every part of your body. So you can tell here my arm fat has gone up in general from my baseline, but it's gone down recently. Legs also has gone up in terms of fat. Trunk, same as well. I'm just getting fat. Like that's the TLDR here. <laughs> um, Android uh, went down for a little bit. This is again, the stomach area, basically lower abdomen. Gynoid area, this is hip, butt, thighs. And here you can tell also gone up. <laughs> uh, so here you can tell that just in general, my total body fat has gone up. And then you get the same breakdown for your lean tissue, which again is amazing, right? Because sometimes you see the weight scale go up, but you don't know if, hey, is that muscle mass? Is that body fat? Is it a bit of both? And for me, it actually ended up being a bit of both. So here you can see my arm muscle, lean tissue has gone up, which is great. And you can see exactly how much at which points. Leg muscle has also gone up. And then here you see the trunk area. Uh, so this is basically your back, uh, chest, stomach. So here I have lost muscle. So my, you know, whatever, back, upper abdomen, all that is getting weak, it seems. And then here, Android as well has gone down in muscle. So my abs are getting weak. Gosh, <laughs> yeah. But got a positive thing here, gynoid, which is your hip, butt, thighs, those have gone up in muscle. And you can kind of see how that totally rolls up. I've basically gained a good amount of muscle in the past two tests. And you can see that right here, I've gained about one and a half pounds of muscle the last time I took the test. So that is it for the test. I hope you just like are also equally mind blown of like how great this data is. Like imagine just getting this data, having this data for like every year of your life, you can kind of see your progression. The one thing that it's done for me is it's kept me accountable. Like when I see these numbers, I am immediately moved to action. So you can kind of see I'm not doing so hot with the fat. And this really has been my wake up call. But at the same time, I can't get too down on myself because, you know, I, I know now that my muscle has also increased, which I'm really happy about. I cannot emphasize enough how important I think it is to get these numbers about yourself regularly. The cost of this is basically 30 bucks, which is nothing for the amazing amount of information that you get. That being said, there are a bunch of other ways that I've tried to measure body fat. I've also gotten body fat measured by body calipers. If you've ever seen something like this, where you basically have this sort of measurement device, there are pros and cons. What I don't like about that machine or that method is that it really depends on how good the person who's measuring it is. And if they are inaccurate or if they take it in the different spot than what they did before, your numbers are going to be off. And, you know, it's hard to make sure that you get the same person doing it correctly over and over again. So that's that. The other problem also is it does not measure muscle mass. But that being said, it's super cheap and you can kind of probably learn how to do it for yourself as kind of an at-home method. Another way of kind of measuring this, and this is probably the simplest way if you don't want to pay for any of this and you don't want in-depth data, you just want, you know, a ballpark way of, of figuring things out. You know, the best simplest way is to just basically measure yourself in all 
kind of regions of your body and take a bunch of photos, like before and after photos. So I actually also do this. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a data nerd when it comes to like measuring myself. So I, you know, I do this in a bunch of ways. So I like take a whole bunch of measurements. It takes me about 30 minutes, but it's really helpful to have. So I know kind of where my fat is going and that kind of thing. Again, this doesn't really tell you your muscle mass. It doesn't tell you the amount of fat that you have, but it's cheap, it's free, why not? Now there's another type of measuring mechanism. If you've ever been to a fitness club or a gym and they have a machine that, you know, supposedly measures body fat percentage, what those devices are doing is using a method called bioelectrical impedance. And what that does is it basically sends a sort of small electrical impulse through your body and is supposed to measure your body fat percentage from that. I actually have one of those devices at home. It's like a small at home device. And I have a link to the version that I have in the comments section if you're curious about that. What I will say is that it's not always the most accurate, but again, it's good for a cheap ballpark method. The device costs about $26. So I just bought one and I just use it every time I do one of these measurements. So again, if you want like a simple, cheap, easy way of just do it regularly, that's the way to go. And you know, your local fitness club or gym might have one of these devices that you stand on and then they tell you your body fat percentage. Just know that those are actually like pretty inaccurate and inconsistent often. I've never had good luck with those to be honest. So if you want an actual accurate across multiple test way, I wouldn't recommend that. Another way that I've gotten it done as well is basically hydrostatic dunk tests. So what this is, is basically they stick you in water and you basically blow out all of the air in your lungs and then they measure how much you sink or float, which basically can be used to calculate the amount of fat and muscle tissue that you have. Fun fact, if you remember Archimedes principle, that's basically what this is leveraging. So muscle basically sinks in water and fat floats in water. So someone with more body fat is going to be more buoyant and will weigh less underwater. Whereas someone with more muscle tissue is gonna weigh more in water and they're gonna sink more. And so you can basically calculate how much body fat and muscle tissue is in a person with that way. It's supposed to be super accurate, but I don't like this method personally because First of all, you have to expel all of the air from your lungs, like you, like everything. And to the point that it like almost starts to burn. <laughs> and then you have to do that three times to make sure that you've done it properly. And so it's just like not a great experience. Like I don't want to be dumped into a tank of water and, and have to do that. Uh, so I just prefer the DEXA scan, which is what I just showed you, where you pretty much just lie on a device and then you let it scan you. The scan takes about seven minutes to finish. And then you get your results pretty much right after you finish the scan. So you're probably wondering, hey, is this affected by how much water I've drank? You know, like my hydration levels? And the answer is yes, absolutely, right? So if you do decide to get this DEXA scan here, it will be affected by your water level. So something that I do when I get these scans is I basically try and just get them first thing in the morning. So I just wake up, drive to the center and get my scan. So I haven't drank any water. And so my hydration levels are consistent across tests. Okay, that's pretty much it for the DEXA scan. Hopefully you guys got a preview of what this tells you. And if you are curious how to get one in your area, what I'd recommend is just look up whatever area you're in. So I'm gonna pick a random area, DEXA scan, Michigan and then you kind of can see which companies offer it in your area. So it seems like Dexafit does along with some other kind of hospitals. And that would be the best way of, of signing up. That is that. Thank you so much. If this was helpful at all, please, please, please just like subscribe and like. I am a brand new creator. I'm just a small fish in a big pond. So anything helps. Thank you so, so much. I love you guys and check out some of our other fitness health videos. It is something I think about a lot and tell me what you think. Was this helpful? Are you going to get it? Do you think it's too expensive? Let me know. I'm kind of curious. Bye. <laughs>